Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at using one bar stats to find the sample mean and standard deviation of a data set, as well as finding a population mean and population standard deviation of a data set. All right, so let's start with checking the mode of our calculator. So when I do demonstrations, I'm going to hit mode. When I do demonstrations, I will always be working with my stat wizards turned off. So I'm scrolling down here, stat wizards. So some of you may not even have a stat wizard in your mode menu, but for those of you that do, I will be demonstrating always with stat wizards turned off. So if it's on and you'd like to highlight it for off, hit enter, just make sure that that one is selected. Okay. So number one here says we have a random sample of six churros that's taken, and we have the calories in each one that are recorded. So the first step would be to enter that data into a list. So I've done that already. So you might want to pause and just get that data into your calculator. And there are six values. And so just reviewing symbols here, which are important, it's lowercase n for the size of a sample. So we have six. And then the sample mean and sample standard deviation, though we have formulas for them, we're gonna let technology help us out. So what we'll do is select one var stats. So one variable statistics. So on our calculators, we're gonna hit our stat button. And then you're gonna use your arrow to go right to the calculate menu and the first option is one of our stats. So we'll hit enter or choose one. Now the calculator needs to know where our data is. And I put my data into our first list, L1. So if you look at the number one on your calculator keypad, right above it is L1, which would be activated by your second button. Mine happens to be blue, so second button. L1. Now, it turns out that L1 is the default for the calculator. So if I had left L1 out, the calculator would still know that it would like us to consider the data in L1. So I'm going to just stay as it is here and we'll do it again. But let's find the one variable statistics for L1 by now hitting enter. And you will actually see the lowercase n here, our n equals six, and then sample mean. So at the top, we have our x bar. So x bar, the sample mean, in this case is 301.5 calories as the average for those six churros. And there is variation in the data. They're not all the same number. And so that's measured by our sample standard deviation, and that is lowercase s. Now you'll notice on the calculator, it actually writes s with a subscript x. We are totally good with just writing the s. So x is just referring to the variable, in this case, calories in each of these churros. And s is, now we're going to need to round here. So the data have whole numbers. We generally round to one more decimal place than what we have in our original data. So let's round to one decimal place. So S would be 21.3 calories. Okay. So you may remember from our lectures that finding standard deviation by hand can be pretty cumbersome. So this is a really nice time to take advantage of technology. All right, so I'd like to do this again, but switch examples a little bit for number two. It says six churros are available at a bake sale. So this is going to represent the entire population of churros available. So we're not talking about a sample anymore. We've got an entire population. So the numbers, the calorie amounts though, are exactly the same as they were in the last problem. So I'm gonna go back to my list by hitting stat, edit, 
And so again, we have those values in L1. All right, so when you use one bar stats, the process is stat button, and then you go to the right to the calculate menu, and then choice one, one variable statistics. And then, as I said before, L1 is the default. So if we don't type in the L1, the calculator assumes it wants, uh, we want it to look in that list L1. So you can just type one bar stats and save yourself a little bit of typing. So now we can hit enter. And this is the exact same screen as before. So what we need to know that the calculator is not able to figure out for us is whether we're dealing with samples or populations. So in this case, we're gonna look at population data. So the population size, there's still six churros, but the symbol for population size is not lowercase n, it's uppercase n. So capital N, uppercase is six. So the calculator is always gonna put a lowercase n and we just need to know that that is not the correct symbol for populations. And population mean, so when we average these six numbers, it will be the same as the average of the six numbers we did previously. So the mean will still be 301.5 because the formula for the mean is the same regardless of sample or population. So we just need to again, know the correct symbol. So the mean of a population is not X bar, it's lowercase Greek mu, but the value, so your calculator can still give you the numerical answer, it is 301.5 calories. So that is not different in terms of the value, but it is a different symbol. And then population standard deviation, the formula differs slightly than the one for sample standard deviation. So in this case, we need to check first the correct symbol. So we know population standard deviation is lowercase Greek sigma. And our calculator does have sigma. It again shows a subscript X, which we can leave off. We're good just writing the sigma. And now, You'll see that value rounded to one decimal place is 19.5. So in this case, for standard deviation, not only is the symbol different for population versus sample, but the numerical value is also different. So the sigma 19.5 versus previously it was S21.3. All right, so that should be a good recap of how to use one bar stats and also a good review of the importance of knowing your symbols.